everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, it's a really simple basing video that I just wanted to show you in case you've got any interest in it. And I've just been painting some Space Marines. So this is my first ever Space Marine or Ultramarine. And I've gone for this sort of, I'm not even sure really what to call it, sort of a, a slaty, rocky, volcano-y base. I mean, you'll at some point I've got to name this video, so it's gonna have a name and you'll be clicking in from that. So hopefully I've decided what it is, but it's basically a rocky base. And I just want to try out some of this Gatehouse Gaming UK basing material. And I've had this wildfire one laying around for about a year. I think it's actually, it's been quite a long time because time flies and I just wanted to try it out. And I thought, you know, Marine might have landed on this sort of rocky existence and I gave it a go and I, I love it. And hopefully I'm showing it you before I do it. Hopefully you guys love it. And it's, it's really, really straightforward. So you're only going to need a handful of things. One of them is the, the wildfire Gatehouse Gaming UK supplier. I will leave a link in the description below. They uh, distribute worldwide. It's basically little pieces of charcoal, I'd say. And then I'm gonna have some basing, Ooh, excuse me, whacking the camera. I'm gonna have some basing glue. It's just Army Painters Battlefield one again. Hopefully there'll be a link in the description below for you. And hopefully it's from Element Games. So that will be an affiliate link to warn you. You will be supporting the channel at no cost to you but it will be an affiliate link nevertheless. So I'm just gonna splurt some on, on the base and I'm gonna have to get something to spread it. But I, I think, I <laughs> actually did it ages ago, it's hard to remember, but I think I want it quite thick because those th these pieces are rather rather big, so I want it to, the glue to be thick enough that they can sort of be embedded in, uh, in the glue, so they've got something to sit on. Um, I'm being a bit careful around his feet, but it doesn't really matter if you get it on his feet because it's not going to stick to it and this glue will dry clear. Um, but obviously it's just better better if we don't, right? Like, take your time and uh, don't get any, any on his feet, but we'll see how this comes out. So I'm trying a new style of video here. You might have noticed where I'm a bit more live. It's a bit slower, I think, the content. You're probably having to watch a little bit more work from time to time, a lot more jumps forward in time. Um, but it, it does it does um, make me erm a lot more because I've got to think in real time while painting something or gluing something. But it does allow for much, much many more mistakes. You're going to see me sort of guess my way through things. Like I, I did that base probably three months ago, so I've got to remember what I did, but pretty sure it was, well, it was definitely this glue and I think it will be lots and lots of thick thick glue to make sure it, it can be embedded in. And then I probably had to pick out the rocks to some extent, choosing which ones I wanted. And there's gonna be a lot of, oh, got a bit on his foot there. Hopefully it won't matter too much. Don't mind if it covers his foot anyway with a pile of rocks. It'd be more realistic if he's in him. This is the second marine I've painted, by the way, if you care. You'll have to let me know if you'd be interested in a in a tutorial on painting ultramarines as well. We'll see, I'm going for that heavy metal style, but I've never painted a marine and edge highlighting is a lot lot harder than I expected. I think it takes some real thought. So I'm then just gonna pile up some pieces, preferably medium sized pieces. These are a bit bigger than I would like, but maybe I should be hand picking them. I can't remember what I did last time. Let's get a pair of tweezers. So I'm using this really fine tweezer by the Army Painter, this one. Again, I can leave a link in the description below, I will do. But tweezers, nevertheless, are gonna help here. I think I might be better off chopping and choosing. So I don't want them to stick over the base too much. And I don't really want them to stick, pile up, and I've already hit quite a big one here. It's quite high vertically. But yeah, let's pick some Bases. And maybe I did it in two layers before. We'll we'll have to find out. That's what the tutorials for in real time. You get to see my brain in action or not in action, as may may be the case. Where's the other guy for reference? Let's get him involved because I just I just really like how this came out. Uh, yeah, I've just gone for lots and lots of flat pieces. They're a bit easier to work with. Ah, this is coming back to me now. I just I do re recall just nudging pieces around for a while. So we might zoom forward in the video. This might be an opportune moment, as I mentioned, that there might be a bit more jumps forward in, in these lifestyle videos, just because otherwise it's just me doing this for a ridiculously large amount of time. No, it, won't, it honestly won't take that long, but it's still gonna be me prodding, 
putting rocks into position yeah definitely this is what I did last time then I start finding some smaller rocks to fill the gaps I still only really want the flat ones and these just to mention these break really easily so if you've got a piece that's perfectly flat but it's too big quick nice and easy snap so you have to be a little bit careful with them but but also really easy to work with because they break really easily so like this piece can now fit in the middle down there so a bit jagged oh it looks rough hope we don't trip on that one this one at the front so big do you think we can get away with it i think so actually it's looking okay so i will zoom forward and i'll just fill in some spaces as best i can i mean this wasn't completely covered here and you honestly you don't even notice it just looks swish so back in a mo so it was just just a couple more minutes fiddling just getting the pieces to fit where i wanted the other thing i noticed i, I did mention it was quite snappable some of it can be really brittle and if you it won't break without a little bit of pressure but you can smash it to pieces I really just covered this in a dusting to just make it look a little bit still covered, but it, it was quite fiddly around his foot. So that's it. I've just laid that out. Uh, one thing to note is it's, it is quite dirty. I, I'm going to go wash my hands now. But yeah, that's it, guys. I'm just going to leave this to dry probably about 30 minutes, I'd say, on this one. Let all that thick glue dry, and then we'll have a look how it looks after that finally dry it's been a couple of days uh, it took a really long time to dry now i actually came back after about 15 minutes and it wasn't dry so i just left it and then completely forgot about it so these are all stuck on very nicely now the glue's set not too wibbly and then the last step and the only other bit i'm going to do is i'm going to do some dry brushing i'm going to use army painters dungeon gray it's quite a light gray if you want it to be a more subtle highlight of these rocks maybe use a dark gray but i just really want them to pop out you know i've gone for the heavy metal highlights on his armor i'm going for this poppy look overly overly highlighted so that's what i'm going to use for this and as i mentioned it's just going to be some dry brushing so i'm using a dry brush this is the small one by citydel and if you're unfamiliar with dry brushing i'm going to get a paper towel and then i'm going to load up my brush quite a bit quite a bit of paint on that and then we're just going to work it into the bristles and then we're going to be scraping off most of that paint onto this paper towel so you can see my light brush is now effectively doing nothing and then we're just going to apply that scrape that over all of the rocks and it's going to pop out all the detail really it's going to highlight all the raised parts i'm just going to lightly scrape it over i'm going to build this up it's going to take well it's not going to take me very long but i'll probably spend 10 minutes or so doing this getting it exactly how i want i'm just going to scrape it over all of these bits of charcoal and they're just going to suddenly start looking like rocks and like really good rocks really really volcanic rocks but yeah really 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 like how they come up now i think i just broke one then as i mentioned they are quite fragile uh, the glue might only be holding them lightly in places so do do go for light touches. I went a bit hard there as I ran out of paint. Little tiny pieces come off, but it's made no effect to that. And obviously, and I didn't need to do this, but you can just go back, add another little bit of glue, maybe super glue some individual ones in exact positions that you'd like them to be. The other thing to take note of is if you are doing this on a, a, a base where you've already attached the miniature like myself, just be a little bit careful with the dry brushing around, around the miniature because it will make his feet quite gray i don't think it's too bad really though because think about it he's probably got some dust on dust on his feet anyway so just maybe blends him into a more realistically moving through the terrain but yeah you can see these rocks are starting to have lots and lots of detail you see all the ridges in it which i think make these really really good for this purpose you really start to see and look like rocks so i'll just go away for a bit and as i said probably a good 10 minutes i'll spend on this just keep keep building up this highlight until i've got them all popping as i want and looking good a couple more bits broken off there so i'll probably super glue some bits on here which just didn't hold that well because there was only a tiny bit of glue and that's it's a good job that did happen on camera so i could mention because i do recall doing that last time a couple of bits i just put get a piece super glue underneath and place it where i want and let that dry for a five ten minutes so back once this is done to show you how it looks so as mentioned about probably about 10 minutes and this is how i've got the rocks looking pretty pretty poppy but still quite subtle i did in the end just add a little bit of super glue to this front one and the rest i just allowed to break off because it just looks even more realistic i am 
I'm going to make it pop a little bit more because to my taste, I would like it a little bit more poppy. So here's the dungeon grey I was using and now I've mixed in some matte white. So you can see the difference, this, this little speck here. I had to put a bit on so you guys could see. That's the original highlight. And then we're going to dry brush on this lighter grey. It's about a third, probably added a third as much white in matte white now don't use a wet palette for this you want it as dry as possible and it's already a little bit runny and then it's again it's just the same i'm gonna i'm gonna do exactly the same technique but i'm gonna be a little bit more picky now and i'll probably show you all this on camera because it shouldn't take too long i'm just gonna add a little bit of lighter highlights just to some of the corners of the most standy out rocks and you can see that's super bright and poppy now or maybe you're not on camera but it is in person and it's suddenly incredibly highlighted but yeah just just the very edges of some of them i'm going to do gives it gives a bit of variety as well and i really just want the sort of top edges or the bits that are sticking off off the the miniature so these ones here and this one behind its foot and maybe just the top of this one along here this bit's poking out i mean it's going to be personal preference at this point um but yeah, suddenly some of these have really, really come to life now. And that's much, much more how I envisaged this looking. That's it, guys. That's completely finished. Hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. Do let me know in the comments below if, A, you prefer these sort of live live tutorials that are hopefully a little bit faster, a little bit more of insight into what I'm doing, but maybe also I'm erming a bit more and wobbling a bit because I'm having to talk as I'm painting. And then secondly, let me know if you'd like to see some more basing videos and if you'd like to see some Space Marine videos. I don't know if I'm good enough to show other people how to paint these yet, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'll get there eventually. Thank you all ever so much for watching. I'll see you again next week.